This is the fastest Factorio speedrunner in the world. And after playing our survival meets automation game Atrio, he said it sucks. I don't know what he's talking about, but I take offense to that. And to prove him wrong, we did the one thing every doubter and hater cannot stand. Oh yeah, we gave him money. Wait, what? Before we get to proving him wrong, if you're new to Atrio, let me break it down for you. It's a very straightforward game about sacrifice. If you sacrifice bulbs at the fuel depot, you get light. If you sacrifice bulbs at the heart box, you get recipes. If you sacrifice yourself, you get a dead body that you can harvest for wires so you can make more buildings to explore the dark while also maintaining the power while also capturing creatures to expand your base and researching new items and starting a farm and dying to creatures while also building a bigger base and dying to more creatures and maintaining power and are you confused? Well, you're not alone because it turns out our gameplay loop is very confusing. You see, a gameplay loop is a series of actions you repeat over and over in a game. In Call of Duty, you find an enemy, you kill that enemy, and you move on to the next one. In League of Legends, you die to a champion in lane, think it's OP, switch to that champion in the next game, lose to another champion in lane, and continue the cycle of losing until you quit forever. I'm so f***ing disgusted. Our gameplay loop is confusing, and it looks like he kind of has a gimp leg and randomly yells at the sky. Ah. See, a good gameplay loop should be circular, and simple, and filled with joy like our Christmas skins that are now unlocked in HR, which is in early access and available to buy on Steam. Go buy it now. Christmas rules. Yay, Christmas. Woo! Sorry, it should be simple. So to fix our gimpy gameplay loop, ah. we hired Anti Elites, a popular Factorio streamer, for some brainstorming sessions. So, Anti, tell me, why is HR your favorite game ever, of all time? HRO? I mean, I don't know that many automation games, so you're definitely in the lower half. Rude! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think you're qualified for this job? Yeah, I love spreadsheets. Actually, I think the, the ratio of playing yeah, factorial, you, you can I'm do right one of the best I don't even have to type a lot of automation amazing. games on games. Okay, you're hired. What makes Factorio so addicting, and how can we take that and move it into Atrium? Factorio has a very unique game loop. Technically, it's very simple. Basically, you automate stuff to automate more stuff, creating problems for yourself that keep you busy in the future. It's basically only one thing, and that is expand. Mm -hmm. The factory must grow is not a saying for no reason. And so for Atrio, what do you recommend? The problem is that you lack the ability to really automate stuff. And the gameplay loop, as of now, is very confusing. Go a bit more simple and keep expanding that light. And if we do, it'll be your favorite game ever? No. Well, we did it anyway. We're gonna prove them wrong. The new goal of the game is to expand your light to find and connect other bases in the dark. But we had to make a ton of changes to make this work, including adding a new fuel depot, three new factories, a wobbly creature, and so much more. Now look, I can't fully explain the gameplay loop without explaining these features. And the gameplay loop is coming, so stick around. But first, let's talk about the fuel depot. So now, instead of sacrificing glow bulbs to fill your battery, it runs on fuel per minute. The more fuel that goes in, the more bulbs you can support until eventually you can make incredible base designs like this one. Wait for it, and... Ha! <laughs> Got it! <laughs> anyway, as you expand, you'll unlock more fuel types, which means more problems for you to solve. Next, we need a way to get the bulbs from the player into the fuel depot. That's why we created the dispense chest. It's a storage chest that essentially regurgitates anything and everything you store in it. Looking at you, Twitter, you can set the dispense rate to something slow if you're a coward or... <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't actually work like that. Sorry. But if you spend an hour mindlessly gathering plants over and over, you can really max out the fuel depot. You just need to get creative. Okay, what's next? Well, we decided it would be more satisfying if all glow bulbs always had to be handpicked. So this next feature is gonna show you how to pick all the, all the flowers by hand. Oh, it's a hand! <laughs> This is the picker bell. He's a giant robotic hand that gathers plants for you. Look at him walk with his happy little jaunt. Ooh, jazzy. And his handy scan beam that lets him pluck plants. And the cool thing is, we as devs get to tweak all of his values. And carefully tuning and tweaking is always the way to go. If you're a coward... <laughs> Still not how it works, but let me explain why we did this and how it relates to the gameplay loop. In order to expand your light, you have to be able to fully automate the fuel depot. So, the picker pal gathers plants for you, they get piped into the dispense chest, which then pipes them into the fuel depot. 
More bulbs per minute means more light bulbs, which lets you expand your light so you can explore the dark to find new items, which you can use to upgrade the heart box, which gives you new recipes to build more automation, to increase your production, to expand your light, and the loop continues. It's starting to make way more sense, but we ran into an issue. Let me explain with an analogy. This is a crow. This is a murder of crows. This is a goose. This is a gaggle of geese. It's a real thing, look it up. This is a factory, and this is a clusterfuck of factories because you can't see a goddamn thing behind it or around it or when you're trying to build lines into them, you just can't see anything at all. Like, look, can you see what's in the middle? No, you cannot. I'd have to go and delete all the factories one by one painstakingly to see what's behind all of them. <laughs> this joke never gets old! <laughs> so let's give it the Danny DeVito treatment. Short and fat and sexy. Boom! It's wider, yes, but you'll always be able to see the grid spaces behind it. Or you'll always just see Danny DeVito, one of the two. You can chain them together and see the flow of items, and most importantly, it simplifies the building process. They now pull items from the assembly line so you can create a pipeline of items from the ore directly to the factory. With that, the gameplay loop is done. But Steven, what about all the extra stuff like the story, creature battling, player research, exploration, dead bodies, cinematics, how does that fit in with the gameplay loop? Well, the core gameplay loop acts as a main highway. You could detour off and, well, I don't know, steal every piece of bread in Skyrim. Don't judge me, you did it too. The main loop will always be there, acting as a guide. And by the way, all these features are available in our beta branch. Just go buy the game, in your library, go to Properties, Beta, select the beta branch, and then you can try out all of them. And now, I think it's time to show anti-elites what's up. So what do you think? You made some good improvements, but it's not better than Factorio. Well, there's no way we can end like that. That's so anticlimactic. We can't just... By the way, this is the Featured Factory of the Month by Seed. It's a new idea we're trying out for every vlog moving forward. If you want to be featured, you have to be subscribed and make sure you join our Discord. Link in the description below.